Welcome to this EBSCO training webinar, all about integrating EBSCO resources into your LMS. My name is Alex. I'm a training specialist here at EBSCO. Here's our objectives for today. We're looking at around a 40 minute webinar with five minutes at the end for any questions and answers. Our objectives for today, really we're gonna start by talking about the benefits of LMS and how LTI integration works. And then we're actually gonna look at what the setup process looks like. So really sort of explain what it is and how to do it. And really the end goal of this is to have EBSCO set up as a tool for your LMS system. So before we get into the sort of particulars of that, just to want to talk about very quickly, really the benefit of integrating EBSCO. Obviously your LMS serves as a bridge between you in the library, your faculty, and then those students as well. And it means that they can get access to library resources uh, in an effective, safe way, which you can track and manage. Okay. It's also really good for your faculty to understand what is in the library as well. So the question is, well, how, how does this happen? How do we set up EBSCO as a tool within the LMS itself? And, and the answer is learning tools interoperability. It's a globally recognized uh, technology standards, uh, and it essentially allows your EBSCO products, notably EDS and EBSCO host, to be launched from within your LMS. We support four LMS platforms at EBSCO, Blackboard, Canvas, Brightspace, and Moodle as well. And Moodle is the one that I'm gonna be focusing on today. Now, why would you set this up? You know, it's, it's very easy to just give a professor, you know, a citation uh, with the PDF article and let them go away and manage it themselves. However, there are real benefits. One, as you can see here, is you are going to be able to see usage st statistics against any article or ebook publication that's within your EBSCO host or EDS when it's being used in uh, the LMS system. Okay, so you're you are directly contributing to library resource usage statistics rather than any kind of offline use. Second is we're actively avoiding any licensing issues because we are accessing it from the platform in which the publications exist. Okay, so we're not going to run into any issues with students downloading articles, uploading them in other places, or faculty doing it as well. And really the last point is, is really continuing on that faculty point. And it's that it, it gives our faculty knowledge and control over which resources they have in the library. Once they're empowered and they know that they can sort of go to EBSCO and start adding in articles, then that is set up there forever. And really the best case studies I've seen of libraries working to improve user statistics, it comes from a faculty library relationship and embedding those library resources in the course materials from day zero. And once you do that, you are guaranteed to see more use of statistics against it. Okay, so really, really key factor here in that faculty library relationship. So next up, uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about the LTI setup process. Obviously, we've already been through benefits of it. But setting up an LTI connection between EBSCO and your LMS, uh, it's really a two-step process. First is we need to create a deployment within the LMS, and then we need to do the same thing in EBSCO admin. Now, if you are a Canvas user, if you're a Canvas user, maybe pop a note in the chat for me. That is a three-step process. So slightly different. We need a little bit of pre-work before we do this setup. So some information here about some of the data points that you will need within the LMS admin. Now, the reason that we have to kind of set up the configuration in the LMS first is that that is going to create some key pieces of metadata which we need to input to the other side, so the EBSCO side. And that's going to help us create this connection. Okay, So we're setting up that configuration and deployment within EBSCO admin and on the other side in the LMS. Now you might be wondering, well, 
I don't really have any technical experience with Moodle or Blackboard or Canvas. I, uh, you know, I'm maybe I'm a new EBSCO admin administrator. Well, the good news is you don't need to know anything, really. You don't need any technical uh, experience to set this connection up. And the reason is what you can see here. We actually have step-by-step -step guides on how to set up an LTI integration for each of the four LMS systems that we support. This is the scenario I've created for us today. So Stanford Business School, they want to integrate more library resources into their seminars. Okay, very common scenario. Now the library does have EBSCO Discovery Service, and then they'll come to us with maybe a sample question. This is just some uh, quotes that I've seen from library liaisons in business in a business school from a university. This is, can you show us how the teachers can put library links on Blackboard? Now that's a very simple question, but essentially what that means is we want the teachers to have the tools to be able to directly put articles onto their Blackboard site. And this LTI connection is a solution for that. Now we're going to head into the LMS demo. But like I said, we don't actually need to know what we're doing. So all I'm going to do is select this step-by-step -step guide here in EBSCO Connect. And I'll pop it in the chat for you so you can follow along. Just some basic information at the top of the page here. Oh, just realize I need to just change my screen we'll just change that very quickly so yes link in the chat we're looking at this page here there's some basic information at the top here just about uh, which version of moodle we support if you are using moodle version 1.1 1.2 or lti 1.0 uh, we do not currently support that uh, those those standards are I think over eight year nine years old at that point at this point so you have to be using an LTI 1.3 tool okay some basic information about which versions of Moodle we support so remember this is going to be different for each LMS these are the versions of Moodle some information here um, about proxy authentications. And then we have some really useful training videos here. Okay, so I'm going to pop these in the chat for you. But these essentially are video walkthroughs about LTI integration uh, for different audiences. Okay, so let's pop this in the chat for you. Um, but yeah, you can send this to, once you set this up, you can send this video to your faculty. Okay, and look, we've got videos here for each um, configuration. Also, I'll pop this video, we go. So there you go, check out the chat. And essentially, this is just a walkthrough guide for your instructors and your administrators. So two really useful audiences there. All righty. So like I said, the setting up this connection, it really is just a case of following step by step. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to split my screen here and we just follow this as we need to. Okay, so there's two steps. One is going to be, first of all, for the Moodle administrator. So that we'll head over to Moodle and we'll just follow this. So I'm going to go to Site Administration plugins, activity modules. Okay, so site administration. Plugins. Um, I'll just find it this way. There we go. So external tool, click on manage tools. And then we'll come here to configure a tool manually. So again, just following the step by step. Now I remember our scenario, it was a business school, Stanford Business School. 
suggesting they want to set this up for their students. Okay, so I'll call this Stanford. Call this uh, Stanford Business School. Now, tool tool URL says enter the following, and this is all I'm going to be doing going through this for DDS LTI version. 0.3, public key set URL, copy that in, initiate, copy this, redirection URIs, put these two links in. Okay, so all I'm doing is copy and pasting. Custom parameters include this. Uh, and then what does it say for tool configuration? Show in activity chooser and as a pre-configured tool. Okay, so show in activity chooser and as a pre-configured tool. For default launch container, then it says here, determine how you want it to be displayed. So what you're gonna do here in the tool configuration, sorry, in the default launcher container here, is actually just choose how you want that tool to be displayed within your LMS. So do you want it fully embedded in the play page, embedded without blocks, just in an existing window, or do you want to open a new window? Okay, so I'm gonna choose embedded without blocks. This is click on show more, click on content message item, and then put this URL in there, okay? Icon URL, if you have one, but you shouldn't need one. And then it says here, yep. So it looks like we're all done. So when you're ready, just click on save changes, okay? So I'm gonna leave that there for now. And I'm just gonna leave that. I'm gonna come back to uh, our external tools. Okay. Now, when once you've set that up, it's going to look something like this. Okay. Just here on the left. So you'll see here it's also displayed in the follow up, but this is essentially the first step completed. You've set up the configuration within your LMS system. And more importantly, what's been set up. Again, I can see my tools active here. Once it's been set up, I get this key metadata here in this little contents menu that I'm going to need to set things up on the EBSCO side. Okay. And you'll also notice here on the right hand side, this is where our first step ends. Okay. So the next step is we need to go to EBSCO admin. Now, sometimes your LMS administrator is a different person to your EBSCO admin administrator. If that is the case, they will need to work together in order to set this up. It'll be a two-person operation. All righty, sorry about that. So let's head back over to EBSCO admin now. And we'd, again, we're just going to follow the step-by-step -step here. Okay, so we're going to go to authentication. Come over here to LTI. We're going to add a configuration. Choose now for blackboards. We're going to choose other LTI 1.3 compliant LMS. That is Moodle. Okay, and it, the, that is also noted here. Um, okay, so we're going to call this uh, Stanford. EDS, because remember, we're, we're Stanford Business School, we're setting this up for our students. Okay. Now, what is the IMS MHD? I'll be wondering. Well, we don't need to know because the step-by-step the -step covers it here. So it's actually saying that we need to enter the domain URL of our LMS. So in this case, uh, it would be something like Moodle.com slash uh, dot Stanford platform JWKS URL. 
And this is saying here that I need to enter the public key set URL from the Moodle tool configuration. Okay, so public key set URL. So what I'm gonna do is head back over to my tool, get this public key set URL, and just paste it into my configuration. Then I need the platform ID, next one. So I'll take that here. Again, just copy and pasting. And the platform your authorization URL. Again, go back to my instructions. That is the authentication request URL, which is just here. Okay, really is as simple as that. Just copy and pasting the answers. No hard work required here. And once I've set that up, I'm ready to go. Okay. So I'll just wait for that to load. Um, just checking we haven't got any questions so far. All right, so next step, uh, once we've clicked submit, just here, we are gonna go to deployments and set up a deployment. So this is the second step on the EBSCO side. So coming into our configuration, we're going to add a deployment. Again, all I'm doing is following these instructions. Call this. Again, now because I'm, what I'm doing here is I have to set up a target for the LMS to populate. Now, of course, many of you will have multiple profiles for your EBSCO systems. You might have EDS, you might have Publication Finder, EBSCO Host, um, yeah, um, maybe Dynamed, whatever it is. So you need to point the LMS to the correct profile. So here, I'm gonna choose my profile. And in this case, it's gonna be the main library's EDS. Okay. And then maybe I can add a description here. Then we need the really key pieces of information here. We need the client ID and deployment ID from the LMS, okay? So we will go back here to our LMS, we get our platform ID, oh, sorry, client ID, and that deployment ID, okay? So the, this is really the, the crux of what we need, okay? Client ID and deployment ID. So now, we are pointing the LMS at this profile specifically, okay? So we've done the configuration, then we need to create that deployment. Okay, when you're ready, just click submit. All righty, uh, any questions about that profile? Because uh, once you scroll down here, you'll see just some, some more settings that you can manage. Um, but I won't be going through that just now. Okay, so I'll just take a quick pause, to see if we have any questions. Okay, in that case, uh, what I'm gonna do is pop a couple more links in the chat for you, um, which I find really useful. Now, many of you will be moving across to the new UI very soon. So how do you make sure those LTI connections retain um, when you move from classic to new UI? Okay, so take a look at this in the chat. Also have really good FAQ page, which I'll also link in the chat. So next up, uh, we are gonna just go, so we've set up our tool, we click submit. So now I wanna show you what the finished tool looks like, okay? So we've, we've managed to set up ourselves from the library. Next step is to go back to the business school. Uh, obviously we do some testing with them, make sure it works okay. 
maybe run a training session for the instructors again look at the chat we've got a really good instructor walkthrough video series there uh, we've done the training with the instructors so now we're ready to launch it so what does it what does this experience look like from the faculty's perspective and from the student perspective as well so i want to show you both now so for this next section i'm going to be a faculty member okay so you've set this up this uh, deployment here so the faculty member is going to come to their Moodle homepage, which a dashboard here, okay. So they log in, which I've done here, my site home. Okay, so this is what uh, I use as C. Got my sort of generic reading list at the top here. And then I've got all of these courses that I've been setting up here, okay. So for this example, I'm gonna be using maybe this digital marketing metrics course here. Now, of course, I'm clicking into this because I'm logged in, I have the ability to edit this page. So let's say I am a faculty member. So I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna edit my page. I've got this new module on strategic marketing, which I wanna add some readings for. And you'll see here all of these articles with the little green jigsaw piece. These are all linked articles, which are being provided from external tools. Okay, so if I click in maybe to, uh, last week's topic, which is metrics reporting and ROI, click on that. And what it's going to do is it's going to show me the article within EDS. Okay, so this is actually showing me the live site. And again, I have the ability to read the PDF here, look at the metadata. If I go to maybe a different course, so we'll look at marketing mix. There we go, okay. And of course you don't just get the PDF here. Um, you actually, you know, you have the ability to grab a citation, export a citation, listen to the article, translate the article. None of these features are available if your faculty member is just uploading a flat PDF, okay? You don't get these extra features. Okay, so we'll translate here 64 languages it's available in okay so if i'm a faculty member how do i add more content so i want to add another article to my strategic marketing course so i'm going to click on add an activity or resource this is going to sort of fire up this uh, list of tools obviously i can see all of my tools in one place uh, obviously the green ones are external. So what I'm gonna do is select one of these. We're gonna go for, uh, I think it's this one, okay? Once you've selected the tool, you need to click on select content. I think the tools, try just try one more with a different result, but I think I may have picked the wrong tool. Yep, so there we go. So we add the article, it'll give you this little green banner here, and then you are ready to save it. And there we go. Then it's added to our course for the week. Really is as simple as that. And go through, look at my course. All we do, all the user has to do is click into any of these. And then they can read the article, read the citation, whatever it is. Okay. Alrighty, well, that's really everything I wanted to show today. Managed to fire through that pretty quickly. So we didn't have any questions. That's, that's good news. So in that case, really, I think the next step for, for you is, is to come to EBSCO Connect. Um, just run a search for the word LTI. Um, in here, like I said already, and you have seen in the chat, loads of help pages video tutorials uh, it's all free it's all open so just search for lti you'll see i'll go back to the home page in a second we've got some really really good help pages here particularly those faqs i put in the chat really really useful 
It's also a video here, long long form video. So I really do recommend just looking at that. Last thing to mention is you will notice when you come to EBSCO Connect that you have an option to preview new EBSCO host, new EDS UI. We are currently in the process of moving customers over from the classic UIs to new UIs. If you are interested in testing out the new EBSCO host UI, feel free to contact support or talk to your sales representative and they can get that moving for you. So really the process is you take a look at a preview, see what you think about it. When you're ready to switch your profiles over to the new user interface, you can let, let us know, either your, your sales representative or the support team, and they can help you through that process. If you want to know a little bit more about the new UI, we run monthly webinars on it. So come to EBSCO Academy and I'll pop a link to our full catalog of training sessions uh, here in the chat for you. So as you can see here, we run them on everything, including new EDS, so the new EDS interface, and also the new EBSCO host interface as well.